Mambo, you guys, um, it is Tuesday morning. I was just about to start editing a ton of projects that I have backlogged. And um, I was just on my Instagram hearing the news about George Floyd, but also hearing about the killing of a young 15-year-old Coral in Ohio that was shot and killed by a police officer because he felt threatened for his life. He thought that she was wearing, that she had a knife on her. Um, but she called the cops. She needed some type of help, some type of assistance, and she ended up dead. And it was, I'm not gonna lie, I just, I couldn't get into these videos, editing these videos. My heart feels heavy. And um, though justice was served as far as George Floyd's murder, um, now we're hit with just another death. And I just was just reflecting upon like, America, it, it just seems like this is just a vicious cycle of these killings. I look at them as like ritual killings to incite this anger in us. You know, we're gonna we're gonna be mad. We're gonna protest. We're gonna um, do all the things that we're gonna do. And it's like this cycle over and over. It's almost like there. It's almost. It feels to me like it's on purpose to lower our vibration. To almost like they're ciphering energy from us. And um, it's just like enough is enough. I'm sorry, it's really windy. I have my doors open in my place and it's windy outside, but um, it's like enough is enough. And I was just thinking about like, though this is not the main reason why I chose to move to Africa because I try not to do things that are based out of fear. Um, and I try to do things that are based out of my desires, my wants, but you know, Yes, it was a factor leaving America because of racism, because of these killings that are happening amongst the police, um, all the microaggressions that you have to deal with as a black person in America. It just felt like this isn't this isn't why I came into this world to deal with this. That's just what I felt. And I just wanted to have a different experience uh, for myself. I don't have any children yet, but I just think about when I have, when I do have them, the type of environment I would like to raise my children in, um, and just to give them a better opportunity as far as feeling safe, like they don't have to worry about that. Um, but I was just thinking about last year, something happened to me, and I was, it was, I want to say it was like a couple days after Joyce Floyd had died. And, and during the pandemic, we were still in lockdown. And one of the things that I did just for my solace and peace was to drive up the P PCH coast up to Malibu and then drive back down. And I love doing that. I would we have, have my music flowing, have the air, the, the you have the wind from the ocean, the smell of the ocean. And just to me, it was so relaxing. And I would just be playing jazz or whatever. I wanted hip hop, whatever I was feeling. Um, just to kind of make me feel like I, I was away from where I was. And um, my car, I had limo tents. That means like the darkest tint that you can have. But I had them on all the windows. Not the front, but all the windows. So in California, you can't have limo tint in the front. You can't have tint beyond 70% in the front. So my, my windows were 5%. So, you know, you know, as a black person, when you're driving while black, you don't want to be a target. So whenever I would drive late like that, I would always just roll down the front of my windows just so I wouldn't be an extra target. <laughs> so I was minding my own business and I had a hoodie on that night. It was kind of chilly. I had a hoodie on. I was just like relaxed. So, you know, from a naked eye, you couldn't tell if I was a woman. You just see a black person and I'm tall. So it's like, you probably think I'm a black man. You see a hoodie, you see someone tall. Um, but you see a black face and I end up driving by these police officers and I wasn't speeding My registration was good. I didn't have like no tail lights missing. My lights were working brake light all that. We was good um, and drive by You know, maybe 30 seconds later you hear the boop, boop. The red and blue lights go off. I'm like Damn and it's late. It's probably like 1 1 a.m. So it's late and I'm in Malibu, um, so pull over. 
my windows were already down, but I turned off my car, I put my hands on the steering wheel. You know, you do the whole thing. You are, I was already trained for this. Black people, we know what to do when we get pulled over. And I was just thinking, I was like, dang, my purse is in the back seat where my driver's license is. So it wasn't like fully accessible. Um, so the police officer comes up to me and he's like, ma'am, uh, do you know why I pulled you over? And I'm like, no, why did you pull me over? He didn't answer. And he's like, license and registration. And I'm like, okay. So I go in my glove compartment, pull out my registration, and I tell him that my, my driver's license is in the back seat and my purse. And my back two windows, which were also tinted, were up and they don't roll down. It was like broken. <laughs> so he pulls out his flashlight, he's looking in the back, and then um, he kind of gets very aggressive and he like, leans over and like holds his gun and and i'm like about to start to go get my my purse like about to start to go back there and he grabs his gun he pulls his gun out the harness and he grabs his gun and i'm like i'm watching him while i'm like i'm like leaning off going like that and i'm like freaking out because i'm like why did you why are you pulling a gun on me he's like well i don't know what you have back there i don't know if you're a criminal I don't know if you're gonna pull a gun out on me. I'm like, sir, I just told you I'm going to get my driver's license, which is back there. I was like, do you want to go get it? I was like, this is unnecessary. And I was like, sorry. Bluetooth. I was like, this is unnecessary, and I don't feel comfortable pulling out my driver's license. I was like, you have my registration. I know my driver's license number by heart. Um. I don't feel comfortable. You just pulled a gun out of me. He was like, well, I don't feel comfortable. I don't know if you have if you have a weapon. And I'm like, I do not have a weapon. And I mean, internally, I'm like shaking, but I'm not trying to show that to him. I'm like shaking inside. He's like, okay, ma'am, I'm going to go run your, your plates. Make sure you're okay. And as soon as he leaves, like, all, I just started like crying. I'm just like shaking and crying and I'm just like trying to pull myself together and his partner comes over who was a woman and she was like I'm sorry ma'am she's trying to console me and I'm like you know this is too much like I didn't do anything I was like and this is at the height of someone that was just killed and there's protests all around LA everywhere and I don't feel safe and I'm like I didn't do anything wrong so the guy comes back over and he's like ma'am you're fine your driver's license is clear and he sees me crying and he's just like you know, why, why are you, almost like, why are you acting like that? And I was like, well, you pulled me over simply because I was black. I didn't do anything wrong. And he was just like, you know, I just had to check that you weren't a criminal. And I was like, why would you think that I was a criminal? Because I'm black. And he's like, no, 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 it doesn't have anything to do with race. I'm like, he's trying to backpedal. I'm like, yes, it does. And I'm like, it's not fair. I was like, you know what's going on in the world right now. You know how you cops look right now. And it will be different if you just pulled me over and you didn't call me a criminal, you didn't say that I had a, a gun on me and that you didn't pull your gun out on me. And I was like, I didn't deserve that. And he, I'm like crying. I'm just like, I'm a mess. And you know, he's like, you know, you're free to go pretty much. The conversation ends and I, my heart is just racing at this point and I, I drive off a little bit. He, he, they end up going like the opposite way up Malibu. I'm like driving back to LA and um, I pull over there's off, there's like all these rocks and I get out I'm just crying I'm just like thanking God that that what the outcome wasn't different but who knows like if what if he was having a bad day he could have shot me and that's how I literally felt and I remember calling my aunt and I was just like so messed up and I didn't really talk to many people about this at all um but I was just really really messed up because this is the reality of America. Most people who are being killed by the police are being killed, they're being pulled over for minor traffic um, offenses, or if not any, non-threatening. And this young girl who was just killed, she called the police for her own protection and she ended up dead in the streets. And I just think about my family, I think about my friends, I think about their children, I think about just everyone that I know there and why I just felt like beyond just wanting to travel and expansion and like having a different experience, how much I just felt unsafe living there. 
And it's like you pray that, one, that you're not the one, that you're not one of the names that we have to now name for their lives or that your family member isn't. But even, even if it's someone that you don't know, you still feel the pain. We're all connected. You still feel the grief. You can't deny that. And it's, it's too much because these are like ritual killings. It's like they're trying to cipher our energy. It just, it's devastating. It's devastating that week after week, month after month, year after year. I mean, I grew up when, in LA, when Rodney King was uh, beat. And the LA riots, I mean, I was like nine or eight years old when that happened. And I grew up in the neighborhoods where everything was on fire. I saw my whole neighborhood go on fire. I saw all the people putting up black owned, all the Asian shops putting up black owned. And, and you know, my dad was a preacher in LA trying to like calm the community and like find peace. And <sighs> But I, I can say that I'm, I'm happy that I'm here. I'm happy that I'm not there because there is an energy there that I don't feel. There is a heaviness there that I don't feel here. There is a peace here that I don't, that I never felt there. And I know a lot of you guys watch me because a lot of people from America, specifically I'm talking about us because this is where it's happening the most. I know you guys watch me because you have that desire to travel or to connect with your roots, come back to Mama Africa, come back home. Um, yes, consider these things. Because it's not going to change. And I don't want to sound like a pessimist. Because I like to think of the best. But it's like, if this is, if, if you think about a foundation, a foundation is never going to change unless it gets destroyed, unless it, it gets abolished, unless you go in and jackhammer it down. So if the foundation of America is built off of racism and hatred towards black people, why would it now change? doesn't matter how much we've contributed, how much we've made America great how much our culture has uh, transcended beyond. I mean, it's it's everywhere. It doesn't matter how much we contribute and uh, produce, uh, how many of our ancestors have uh, died, killed, been raped, and built America. It's just, it's not for us. <laughs> and that was the reality that I had to come to face. It's not for us, it's not safe. And though, some people may look at it the land of opportunity. Yes, you can make lots of money there. Yes, we have progressed, and it's not where it was 50 years ago with civil rights, you know, 150 years ago with slavery. Of course, there have been improvements, but the overall, like, needle and thread, the overall thread has still been racism. It's just been twisted in different forms. And I decided that I didn't want to live my life that way. I decided that when I have children, I don't want to raise my children in that environment, and I want to be able to give them uh, a better life, a life of like understanding who they are on a, on a deep level, loving, loving the skin that they're in, like not trying to, I can't even tell, especially being in LA where colorism is like a mug out there, and I know colorism lives everywhere, it's everywhere, but being here, I just feel so much more beautiful. I feel like... I just feel like, yes, I am exactly who I should be. The way that I look, the way that I'm created is exactly who God intended me to be. And in America, you don't feel that way. You really don't because it's very, the Eurocentric mindset, the standards of beauty, even though it's really crazy because all the things that, you know, uh, some people aspire to look more European, but those Europeans are looking like us. It's very confusing and just like, what <laughs> and i'm not even going to talk about africa and you know some of those issues with those type of things but just as a single black woman coming from los angeles california um and having all the experiences that i've collected over the years i have no regrets about being here i'm very very grateful to god to myself to my higher self to my ancestors to everyone who has supported me on this journey or not supported me it doesn't even matter I'm grateful to myself that I made the decision to just see what what is on the other side. <laughs> what is actually there? What could life be like? What can you experience? You can, look, these are opportunities that you can never take away. Never, ever, ever. 
never, ever, ever, ever can anyone take these opportunities away, these experiences away, this reality um, away from you. It will always be with you, even if you have to go back. Um, it will always be with you. But I just want to tell you guys a story because I know a lot of you guys are watching from America and you know you were inspired to come back and like I said um, when is enough gonna be enough when are you going to decide you want something better when are you going to change the trajectory of your life your family's life I don't know but I send my love and condolences to the young young girl in Ohio. I'm sorry, I should look up her name. I don't remember her name. Um, who was murdered. And all the other names that are have gone unnamed uh, and that we know. Uh, yeah, I send my condolences to love. So, peace and love, y'all.